So I'm going to talk to you about a reflection that I have made during this quarantine about how the corporate world is going to change because of COVID and how our woman differential skills are going to impact and change the corporate world. Here just who am I? As I told you, I work in Microsoft previously to Avianca. Avianca is the leading airline in Colombia and the second airline in Latin America. I'm the chief customer experience in Avianca. And you can write me to Twitter, La Duque UK, or in Instagram as Maria Paula Duque Oficial. I am also part of a group of women in Colombia that is called Woman TIC, Mujeres in TIC, in which we actively promote the presence of women at the corporate level. And I'm also promoting the presence of women in board of directors in our country. We are living a new reality, and I believe you all are hearing this and you all sense this, but what I believe is important is this new reality is going to be here to stay. And I want you all to reflect all that you have done during the quarantine to be present, to be near your families, your teams, your workplace, your work teams, your significant others and your families, and at the same time, you have been able to navigate in an uncertainty environment, being able to keep you yourself together with calm, how resilient we as women have been during this pandemic and how that is gonna impact the work environment in which we work, the companies in which we work. And on one side, which are the challenges, but which are the opportunities that we should embrace to be able to continue impact the corporate world after COVID with a lot of competences that are pure feminine, pure woman power that sometimes we hide because we believe that show us weak. And I'm trying to argue that those competence, those women differential skills are going to be the ones that will really change the corporate environment for the future. Please think for a moment in your recent work life, how many times you have heard of companies saying, I'm about to be broke, I'm out of catch, I'm completely uncertain, I don't know what to do in the future with the business, I don't know how the business is going to be. And I believe, as you may heard from Rene Brown in the personal world, the power of vulnerability the ones that has been very vulnerable during this pandemic has been companies and corporation. And we, as humankind, at person, we have been strong enough to support our companies, to be able to survive in a very difficult environment, and to say so, we have changed the way of the pyramid and make us stronger than the corporate world in which we work. And the other thing that I believe is a new reality that is going to be here for long, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about later, is telework, work from home, because we need to build corporations based on trust. I don't know if you suffer the same in your countries, but for the time I've been working in technology in Colombia, I spent a lot of time trying to convince my customers that home office was an opportunity, that as we call it here, teleworking or remote working was an opportunity for companies. And the main barrier that I had at that moment was trust. People didn't want to do that because they didn't trust in their people. They were suspicious of what their people were gonna do. And now after two months and a half, they cannot stop uh, trusting us because they don't have any other possibility than trust. So this is a new reality that is here to stay and is going to change the way in which we live, in which we work, in which we are productive and how we are going to do that. And sometimes when I look into this specific um, picture of all the women leaders in the world that has been able to survive COVID with amazing, outstanding results, we need to ask ourselves, what does they have? What makes them different? And I believe it's because they are women, they took decisions in a different way. Some of them are common, some of them are not, but I believe they were able to put their leadership in empathy and thinking about the people they need to take care. If you look at New Zealand, New Zealand locked out the country when they have just 102 cases of COVID. And it's one of the first countries to be out of the pandemic, not the pandemic, but the lockdown and start recovering the economy. And the case that I like the most in her case is that she was with a baby all the time 
managing their family and being able to keep the country together and to keep herself also together. So I believe those are attributes that we need to rely on, that we need to be conscious that they are good by themselves because that's how we are and stop fighting and get them and somehow start thinking about is it this attribute or the other attribute? Is it the masculine style or the feminist style? Because this is the yin and yang, and you know it has feminine and masculine, but if you turn it all the way down, we may have a little bit of one or the other. We may not be equal, we may not be different, but those attributes can be acquired and can be acquired by men, can be exhibited in a more freely way from us, and we can rely more firm in those attributes that give us a different way to look at the situation and to look to the world. So for me, the first and most important of all is empathy. Sometimes we like to be very aggressive in the office or try to hit in that, but we are able to see through the eyes of others. We are able to understand their needs. I was yesterday in a conference of CEO women in Colombia, and one of the things we were discussing is, you know when one of your teams is feeling, one person in your team is not feeling okay. You know, and you can sense that. It's not in the words. You know, you look at their eyes and you know something is going on. And then you're able to turn at that person and say, do you need something? Are you okay? Do you need me in a different way than the normal way you need a manager? Do you need me to talk to? Is your family okay? And that power of connected with others in a different level is completely different in the corporate world. And let me go back to the new reality, but I believe it's important that the pandemic has democratized the corporate world. Think for a second that during these two months and a half, CEOs, the owners of the corner office, has been in a corner of their house, exactly the same of all of us, living the same challenges. So now a corporate well, a world more democratized is able to practice empathy because it's gonna be more important to turn to our employees and look to them and know how they feel that just follow our leadership style based on KPIs. So the opportunity coming here is based on the vulnerability of the corporate world to build different companies, to build companies that show a human part of the company and think differently about their employees. And the home office is gonna burst that situation because you're not gonna just say, okay, go and work from home. We, as technology people, we may be able to help them to organize better, to be able after practice empathy to understand that despite you're working from home, you need to do a lot of work in your home, in your own life, and then allow your people to have that time to do the right things in the right way. Pretty near to empathy, then we have compassion. That ability of giving a hug, of just hearing the other one and being more compassionate, being able to see, understand, and live the life of others. And I want to talk about two things that I believe are gonna be opportunities for the human, woman, women, humankind. We heard a lot about equal pay. We heard a lot about it. But I believe after this, companies are gonna take it more seriously, are going to realize that we are 80% of the consumer world in, term in, in, in the matter of decision-making, or money making because we buy for us or for someone else. But we cannot continue avoiding the discussion of equal pay because in a world of equal pay, if one of the two persons in charge of the household lost their employment, one could be able to support the other if we were practicing equal pay as a principle, as a designing principle of the corporation. And then the other one that I don't know in your countries is something that is very relevant, but we have suffering here, is bio, uh, domestic violence. It's obvious, but in the pandemic, the indicators of domestic violence in Colombia went to 200% more than it happens previous. And it also showed that it's not only important, but absolutely determinant to have in your own companies mechanism for your woman employee to be able to call someone, to ask for help, to know who to look for when they are in an authentic problem. 
Maybe we thought, we, we thought in, in uh, benefits in a different way before this pandemic, but after this, we are going to look into the benefits we provide in a more simple way, in a more human way, and in a more urgent way. I love this one because I do believe we women, we are jugglers. I mean, think for a minute, how many things have you done during this morning? How many things have you started doing since you woke up? I mean, I, I make my bed, I start planning breakfast, then I wake up my kids, they went to a school virtually, of course, but then I went into a conference and this I was thinking about this conference, but then I need to think about lunch. And this juggling make us hyper productive. And I believe that is not something that we could not take into account. We need to show and exhibit that attribute with trust, with confidence, because we are able to manage so many things at the same time, manage our personal life, our work life, and this democratize of the pandemic and this new corporate world, I, I believe the opportunity we have with being jugglers is that companies are going to think in a different way the work and life balance. And in our own homes, I do believe that one of the values of this situation is that our kids, our husband, our significant others that see us working all day through all many different things during the day are going to valorate value in a different way why we do what we do, how we impact the world with the work that we do. And I'm going to just give you an example. The other day I was talking with my younger kid that is 13. And he said, I know what you do in Avianca, and I know now that you manage customers because I see you solving the problems. That being near, seeing us working, I believe is going to put in us a different value in our families of what we do outside our families. Because sometimes in the market, we may be value in a different way, and our own people may not be so conscious of the kind of work or impact that we deliver outside our homes. And that is very, very important. Of course, from juggling core multitask. And I was hearing a podcast from The Economist about three days ago, and they give an, an, a statistic that amazed me. Women in household during this time are interrupt 50% more, more than the parents of our kids despite, despite they are in the same home. So we do know not only how to juggle, we know how to multitask. We, I always say we work like in windows open that we maintain open and did make us hyper productive. And now with home office, I believe this is gonna show that we as women, we are able to survive, live and use productively the home office and hopefully corporation around the world to maintain, to attract, maintain and retain more women into the workforce are going to design more job descriptions based on home office and based on the ability that we have to make our kids grow, be teachers, be executive, be mothers, be uh, wives, everything together without losing the productivity. And hopefully the opportunity that will come out of that is that we are going to stop that sentence in the corporate world that said, mm, I don't know if I'm going to give her this next challenge because she has two kids. Or I don't know if to offer her this opportunity because she's just expecting a kid. Because you know what? We are able to do it. We are able to raise kids, to raise good kids, good citizens, and be able to work at the same time. So next time when someone in a work interview asks you if you are productive or you are results oriented, please take into account how good we are in multitasking and who, how good we are dealing with two environments in one single space. And home office really, and I believe we as technology people, we have a lot of work to do to enhance, to make the world adapt home office in a different world. Corporations are going to ask themselves, is it make sense to buy meters to have very luxury offices, or is better to have more power people working from home that is at the same time more happy because to be honest with you, I believe we all, at least as women, and I'm speaking of myself, we always have that guilt of leaving our kids alone or not devoting enough time to our kids or not be able to support them with the home school they have to do. After two months and a half living in a new reality, I must believe that I believe we are 
I have leveled the playing field. I have no guilt. I have devoted myself to work and to being home and to be able to deliver to my office and to my family the kind of nurture environment that they need to have at the same time. Resilient. And I put Malala because I always think about resilience when I think about her. But I believe that's an attribute of woman. We are able to survive so many difficult situations. And not only survive, we are able always to look of the opportunities that that situation brings into our lives, into our families, into our work environment, our companies. And we must feel proud of it. So I invite you all to embrace resilience, to embrace the vulnerability that we sometimes don't express in the corporate world and turn it into an opportunity to learn. Because we are resilient. Yes, if we make a mistake, we can say, yes, I make a mistake and let's go ahead. And let's go and try to pursue my objectives and try to pursue what I want to do. So resilience is a key part of what we are. We are resilient to our works. We are resilient to our family. We are resilient to very difficult situations. And last but not least, we are pure activists. We need to speak with our own voice. And I believe this pandemic has taught the world that no one else is going to keep silence with an injustice happening. No one is going to keep silent if see that there are different in the world that needs to be compensated. And the opportunity we have with that in the corporate environment is that we can say what we feel in the future in our companies. We need to find companies that are able to understand that we say, no, I cannot be in that meeting because I have a family or a personal commitment or something that I really devoted to and I need my personal life to, and open up the corporation to hear us in a different way. So this, this was my reflections, all the competence that we have, and I do invite you always to believe in you, trust in you, exhibit the pure feminine attributes that we have to go ahead and pursue your dreams and help the corporate world to be impacted by the beauty of the women attribute that make us different, make us, help us to make a difference in the corporate world, and after that may help us to, to build a different corporate environment based on the woman view of the world and the pure feminine attributes that we will help us to create more human corporations. I believe I have three minutes left in case some of you would like to say something in our chat because I would like to hear you. I'm reading here. Global Ambassador, I'm sorry to look into the other screen. Let me try to change into our um, chat so I can read what you're saying. Mm. Paola Cáceres from Colombia, based in Munich. I have, I'm seeing a lot of Colombian people living in Germany, amazing by that. Yes, women really do have a strong sixth sense. That's very important, you know, intuition, it's something that we have that we sometimes we don't put in our resume, but actually is one of the most important attributes that we have. I mean, we are able to read the environment in a different way. We are able to see when something is not going very good. Sometimes, and this is just a, a learning from my previous works and the interviews of works that I do with women, despite asking what you learned, what did you graduate, how many titles do you have, I always ask women, what is that that you bring to the teams in which you work? And that is one of the questions that we struggle the most. And things like intuition, somebody's talking about solidarity, but I, I think sorority, the ability to trust one in the other, the ability to help others that is very related to compassionate, is also amazing. The ability to create, because we are jugglers, so we are creative, we know how to manage time, we know how to solve problems. And I don't know if your country have that kind of advertisement, but when Mother's Day is arrived here, they're showing an advertisement of a mother making a costume for the kids uh, that is a giraffe. We are able to think fast and know how to resolve problems because we are trained since very young 
to really solve session problems. And that is an attribute that we always bring to the teams in which we work. Um, do you feel empowered as a woman in tech in Latin America? That's a question from Paola. Um, I do believe so, but I invite you all to build communities in your countries. I believe we need to exhibit more who we are and we need to show the power of being together. The exercise we have made with Mujeres TIC in Colombia has been amazing to maybe try to enter in contact with women tech and become ambassadors and try to show in your country the power that we have and who we are as women in tech and how we can really help companies and technology to build products with the view of a user as a woman. So I believe we are of the time. I'm so sad that we finished. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm so happy to see you here. And I'm happy to see all the comments that you're giving me in the chats. And I hope you continue to have a very, very good conference because me personally, I have enjoyed hearing all the voices of women in this conference. So good afternoon for all, and thank you very much for this opportunity.